Okay. Welcome back to my channel, Bass Lovers, and here is part two of the Bryce Epilogue. Monologue. Mon I don't know. I'm going to do any a other words right now for the next <laughs> 10 minutes. So, this is the epic interview. I didn't get to any of my questions on part one. So, part two, we're just going to go just a good time. down my list. Just, I know, I love this. Yeah. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. He is the bass player, as you know, because I'm sure you've watched part one. And if you didn't, you should go watch that now because there was some really cool bass talk in there. He is the bass player from Lifehouse and Comox. Yes. And being a bass player, he's just like in the club right off the bat. So, you know he's cool, right? Thank you. You. He's got a lot of cool shit just, to say. Just straight up. I'm, I'm in the club. <laughs> you were doing a lot of traveling because yes. you get a lot of gigs with Lifehouse, right? We do. And mm -hmm. then when you're not with Lifehouse, you're doing gigs with Comox. A lot of those are local, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I'm sure some of them travel. How do you keep a sense of home in LA while you're moving around so much? Or are you like a live out of the suitcase kind of guy and you're fine with that? I've always kind of been a bit of a nomad, you know, yeah. like what, suitcase, just being on the bus, sleeping on the bus or sleeping, you know, different hotel rooms here and there. I'm 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 good with that. You know, my sense of home it just comes and this might sound super dorky. It's from the base. <laughs> it's from the base. <laughs> That's the sense of home. Boom. Slap of the the E. I mean no, I just need to be grounded with wherever I'm at, whether it be working out, whether it be meditating, whether it be any sort of practice where I'm grounded, then I feel good about myself wherever I'm at, you know? And, and as hip, hippie as that sounds, that's a big part of touring for me. That so. does not sound hippie. Yes. <laughs> I, grew <up> in a <laughs> I grew up in a family where it's like, what are you, what are you doing there? Are you, are you a hippie? You know, are you meditating? <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's a big, it's a big deal for me. And, um, yeah. So. That is so cool. I didn't know that you meditate. I meditate too. Yes. And I feel like, I know like in India, they teach children, like children wake yes. up and meditate. It's yes. like a thing. It's part I'm of sure. life. But out here, it's not a part of life. And when you do it, mm -hmm. you have to have like the disclaimer. I swear to God, I'm not a hippie. I'm not in a cult. <laughs> I'm not, you know what I mean? Like you have to explain. I shouldn't do that. I should never, I should never be apologetic for that side of me. But yeah. I mean, but, but it, I totally understand. Yeah. Like as soon as I say I meditate, I, I'm sure like half the room's just like, <laughs> because I usually do speak to rooms full of people, and I'm like, oh, I meditate. Like, <laughs> and, ha and, then, and half of them are like, oh, God. I'm kidding. That doesn't happen. Anyway, go on. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's uh, that if, I, if I'm taking care of myself wherever I'm at, then I think, you know, traveling or being at home. I mean, obviously, I have good friends here in Los Angeles. So, um, you know, but I'm, I'm single. I don't have a family. I don't have pets. So I'm very much ready to go. I can nomad out. I can travel all over and yeah. you know, very much, I'm very much Peter Panned my way through life. I'm in the I believe in magic. I love meditating and it's completely changed my life. I know we're getting off base, but this is really important, you guys. No pun intended. <laughs> I th just think it, on the surface, yeah, it's so important to kind of just like clear the cobwebs of everything and just connect with your yourself. That's how you present yourself in the best way possible. You can go out about your day and you're you're good to people. You're present and yeah. You know that's. And it's so weird. Have you noticed that like if you're nervous or or something bad's happening in your life and you go out, like people see it, and it's not something that they're visually seeing. It's so weird. Yeah, yeah. people are pretty intuitive to like, yeah. where you're at. If you, if you're putting on a mask and you're faking a smile, it, it, I think. It's pretty obvious. To yeah, they can it's, tell. Yeah. One time I was like, I had just like had like something really agitating happen and I went and mm. was getting my nails done yeah. and the girl was holding my hand. She's like, are you okay? Yeah. She's like, I, you just feel like you're vibrating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, yes, I'm okay. okay. It's I'm fine. fine. I'm okay. Trust me. <laughs> oh, I read the other day, mastery is an empty cup. Wow. Person who always strives to improve stays on the road to mastery. So how do you keep up your your chops at bass playing? What do you do to practice and how do you keep your chops up? And can you share any of your techniques with us? Bass playing is definitely one aspect of who I am as a musician. It is probably one of the top three most important things. I feel like keeping my vocals in shape is another one. With Lifehouse, I feel like I've overthought bass lines. I studied a lot of the technique, the theory behind music, and that goes in my bass playing. Like instead of <laughs> jockoing up a part, I'll, yeah. I'll be like, 
how do I, what, you know, what would John Entwistle do? Oh, you just do? try to keep it simple. Simple is yeah. one thing. Like, attitude is another. Like, I use a pick sometimes. I didn't grow up using a pick. With my face on it, with by the way. With her face, by the way. I play a ton with different drummers. And I'm always jamming, I'm always rehearsing, and I'm always playing. And, um, but do I, I used to get in a room for five hours at a time when I was going to music school or when I was, like, practicing to develop my technique. But, um... I feel like my strengths are with other musicians now because that's yeah. what I what I do, and um, when I do when I am by myself and I am working on things like I'll just I'll refresh with certain scales I'll keep my hand in shape like there's a spider technique that I like to do mm -hmm. just to keep my hands strong and I, and I like to jam along I like to, and, I, and I like to jam along I like to, and, I, and I like to jam along I like to listen to the radio I'm always listening to bass lines you know mm -hmm. I feel like a great song needs to have a great bass line I feel like my ear is very much developed. By listening, when I write with Comox, I write on bass a lot of times. I'll, I'll put it on a pedal, get a good fuzz sound, and dig in and try and get a certain attitude with this or that. I have the foundation of a lot of technique. That's how I learned how to play bass, but I just like playing minor pentatonics half the time now. And Yeah, I mean, because I, I teach bass, scale. right? Yeah. And I just teach him like the minor pentatonic right off the bat, and I'm just Boom. like, you know what? You gotta get We're going to learn a lot of other <laughs> stuff. Yeah. But just FYI, 80% yeah. of the songs you're going to play are yeah. going to be this. Yeah. <laughs> and that's I mean, it. It's over. I'm it's fired. Over. Fire me. Yeah. <laughs> and you're talking about mastery in the cup. If, you ma if you're a bass player and you master the minor pentatonic scale, <laughs> you're good. you got gigs. I've played five strings, six strings. I've, I've experimented with different tunings, with different tones. Um, but I like to keep it simple now. John Entwistle from The Who's bass lines are incredible. Ding's bass lines, Paul McCartney's bass lines. I'm like, what are they thinking? How are they thinking when they're writing? This this thing sounds great. Like it's, This it thing feels better great. sound great. This is my number one, the bass. This is like my bass. Yeah, this, this is, is my tone. Awesome. Yeah, so you better like it. Show us this technique. It's a spider tech. It's called the spider. It requires like no sort of melodic thinking. It's just a warm up of the fingers. You start off by doing one, thing, the first finger on the first fret of the first string, and then the second finger on the second fret of the se second string, and then the third, <laughs> the, third, the, third, the third, and the fourth, the fourth, the fourth. Yeah. And then you reverse it. Yeah. And then you go up one fret and you do the whole thing over again. And then at the same time, your right hand. If you're finger plucking, your thumb is kind of moving across and holding down and muting the strings when yeah. you're on the string. So you just start simply and you go up the neck. And you try to keep every note clean with your finger as close as you can to the fret because it, it'll buzz. Yeah. yeah. Me too. I used to practice six hours a day. Yes. And then once I got to a certain level, it started being about other things. It yes, started being so about, like, things. can I hear the bass line and play it? Like, can I yeah. hear a song and imagine how that is on the fretboard? Yeah. Or, like, can I get in the pocket with the drummer? Because, I mean, you could you could tweak on that for hours. Yeah. Like, like, am I right on the bass kick? Mm -hmm. Am I a second right before? Am it. I right yeah. behind it? Like, are you dragging? There's... There's so many things. Yeah. I mean, obviously, first, you have to get the instrument down. Yeah. You know, that's important. It's called maintaining. It's going to the gym, and I, yeah. I, I need to go to the gym more. It it's is. It's like little saying. bicep curls for your yeah. fingers. So then you can <laughs> continue with the exercise. You randomize it. So you can go two, one, three, four, two, one, three, four, and then go up the scale that way. Okay, you randomize it, but you do the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, or you so you don't do have to think three, about it. One, two, four, three, 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 mind coordination with playing so when and then you, warm you can try up, with the pick which is even harder you know, so. do you use that to warm up too i use it before lifehouse gave it from warming up yeah wait you know show us with the pick we want to see oh man my beginners want to see <laughs>
plugged in because you don't really gotta hear it. Exactly. But I'm already feeling that. Like yeah. that's it's a good workout. So this exercise is a simple one using the G major scale again. But instead of going from, you know, skipping um, notes going from the one to the three, you go up the scale in in variations of four where you go one, two, three, four, uh, the one to the four in the G major. Starting on the second note. Way slow. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, major seven, five, six, major seven, one, six, major seven, one, and then major seven, one, three, <laughs> okay, so we ten. I also like do, using tenths and going up the scale with tenths. So Pretty. the second note is a minor. Seventh note of the of a major scale, the chord, if you're playing a seventh, has a flat five in it. Show us one more. One more. How about what so okay, since you're a singer and bass player, yes. do you do anything to like um I mean I I know there's things when like the rhythm is different than the vocal line, mm. when the two rhythms are different. Yes. And you just kinda have to yes. practice that shit over here's, and over. Here's but a is there one. any technique that you exercise that you have to work with vocals and mixed with bass no but off the top of my head you have to get the bass down first mm -hmm. before you sing the melody so les claypool from primus has the most complex bass lines ever i think out of any bass player out there and still manages to sing a different rhythm with different phrasing than the bass and does it effortlessly and what mm -hmm. he says he does is he'll sit in front of a, t a tv and practice the bass over and over so that he's not even thinking about it. He's just watching a show and he's just playing blah, 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 or whatever, you know, like Tommy the Cat. So for me, is if, if, if you're a bass player, if you want to sing, I think one of the easiest and best ways to start is a simple song like Stand By Me, right? So it has a bass line in G. Right? Everyone knows it. But that already like, has a little complication because it's got that rest in it. You don't need to play it. That, there's no drummer, so I do it. Yeah. Or you shouldn't. Do right, it. but you've got that like pause, and yet you're gonna be yeah. singing over that. You yeah. know what I mean? So you still gotta like hit that on the bass. So you have to get it down without even thinking about it. I'm having a conversation with you, right? <laughs> I'm right. Trying not to screw it up. But, Can you not... do your multiplication tables? Buddy? Okay. What do you got? <laughs> what do you, what, like, I don't know, do like a uh, four. Uh, yeah, like Plus the multiplication <laughs> tables of four. Like oh, four, eight, twelve, sixteen. Okay, four, eight, twelve, sixteen. <laughs> uh, Twenty, right? Twenty-four, yeah. twenty-eight, uh, thirty-two, uh, thirty-six. Yeah. Forty. Uh, Forty-four. Forty-eight. <laughs> oh, I screwed up. See, but. <laughs> But that's the that's key. That's okay. We got the idea. Right? Is that you just you just nail that bass line to where you, you don't have to think, have to about, think about it anymore. If you're singing. Right. Yeah. So the mm. bass comes first. And then when you get that down, the simple melody. When the night is come and the land is done. So you have to get the bass down first. You can sing, if you can do Stand By Me, that's like a simple one to start with. Um, okay, good. So all my beginning any... singer bass players learn Stand By yeah. Me. So I hope this video is really helpful for you guys. Thank you, Bryce, for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you, guys. And remember to put in the comments section what you found the most helpful and any other video requests you want. Possibly with Bryce. Maybe we can do more videos together. I mean, because he lives in the hood. I'm uh, so. very close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks everyone. We'll see you, you later. Bye. And I like to jam along. And I like to jam along. And I like to jam along. And I like to jam along.